WBCB presents Pro Wrestling Weekly. Enough is enough, and it's time for a change. I can't believe I'm putting my voice to this. Call in with a question or comment at 215-949-3232 or 888-922-2149. Thank you for your irrelevant opinion. And now, here's your host of Pro Wrestling Weekly, Ferran Derry. The first thing you need to do is to tell these people to shut up if you want to hear what I got to say. I'm a broadcast journalist. I have a right to my opinion. Oh, son of a... I am the best on this microphone, in that ring, even at commentary. There's the sound of the bell. And that means we are off. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here with you alongside Lucas the Intern. How you guys doing today? Ah, you found where the microphone is. Very good. Oh, that's so funny. And RC from Completely Damaged joining in studio. Keeping it damaged always. Good friend of the show and uh, good friend... Uh, Doing his own little radio thing Mondays from 11 to noon on Montco Radio. That's right, yeah. Was it MontcoRadio.com? You'd think I'd know this by now. Yeah, every Monday, 11 to noon on MontcoRadio.com. Come get completely damaged on the radio. And I usually join him for that, and that's where I get to be a little bit more sassy, which I know is kind of surprising considering how much sass I give Lucas here. I want to be on that show now because oh, I want to be sassy. You definitely got to see heel for Ryan come out. It's great. Well, it's because I don't have to run the show, so I can be more, I can be more in the background and just kind of think of clever things to say, as opposed to here where I've got to react to the attempts at the clever things that Lucas says here. We just got to control, and of course, Nick Cataldi. Yay! Yay. We just got to control uh, Matt Porter's uh, Hulk Hogan uh, theme fetish or whatever it is. Well, he the, loves that song. Yeah, he loves he loves the real American theme, and he also loves my Vince McMahon impression. He does, doesn't he? Always cracking up, man. It's the simple things that amaze people. So is it this is. where Ferran's the intern on your show? Is that is that where oh, no. we're going? He, he, Are you kidding? I'm I'm the one providing it. He's RC providing reached out to me. Yeah, he reached out to me to help him. He's like, hey, I'm getting started with a radio program, and yeah, you know, I'd love you know you've worked in radio for quite a while, and you know, I'd love for you to help me with it. And I'm all about helping people out. Way to kill the joke, Ferran. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. I take things literally. Very much. It's what I do. Yeah. Among a lot of things. Stick to your day job. Which is radio. So we're going to do that. We're going to talk <laughs> yeah. wrestling because that's kind of what we do. Yes. Or something like that. <laughs> WrestleMania 30 right coming there. up a week from tomorrow. Wow. Eight days away from WrestleMania. It's crazy. I don't know. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm at maybe about a five or six out of, on a scale of one to ten as far as excitement for it. I don't know what it's going to take for me to... Uh, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll go over the card in a little bit, but also next week, the Hall of Fame induction. So one of the things, I kind of threw it out on the, uh, the Facebook fan page a little earlier this morning, and I'm sure there'll be, some, uh, there'll, there'll be some responses coming up in a little bit for it, but wanted to look at notable Hall of Fame omissions. Now, we know who's going in, and in case you don't, I'll go ahead and give you the rundown in just a second, but... Uh, yeah, I have it here somewhere. At least I thought I did in my notes. Usually they're all spread out here, but since I'm in the uh, the control board here, I'm kind of flipping through them in front of me. So, yeah, lot, lots going on with that. And needless to say, there are a lot of notes. But uh, And, Fran, I got a weird thing to say to you. How about Scott Hall getting inducted and you and I, Dr. Ruthless and Matt, just talking about it? And, you know, they, you guys were saying, not yet, not yet, and then that night. That was crazy. Well, I mean, that's the other thing. It wasn't Scott Hall that's, I, that's getting true. inducted. It's, it's Razor, Razor Ramon. Ramon. I really hope he. I I hope he does the hey yo, but I don't want him to sound like sound like Chico. I don't want him to speak in that accent. Just but that's the Razor. You, Ramon, you don't. Though. Yeah, you, you don't want to hear the whole speech in Razor Ramon character. Hey yo, what hey, yo. a thrill for the bad guy <laughs> to be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> You can only imagine. Uh, I mean, yeah, getting it for about ten soda, seconds. Though. If he just stopped there, that alone is then awesome. we'd be all right. Yeah. But if he's doing the whole, I don't, I don't know if he can do a whole five to you know five plus minute speech. 
I don't know. That that I might be a what, lot even for his character. Give another Hall of Fame shot if he was doing that, and then halfway through be like, you know what, guys, I can't do this. I'm from Minnesota. I can't speak in this accent any longer. That's that, great. That I be... forgot about all the promos of him pushing the kids into the into the fountain and all that when they showed. Oh yeah, that some of that great. initial stuff from late '92. That was great. That, that was that was fantastic. All right, here we go. Now, of course, it's the one page that I had off to the side to keep out of Lucas's view. The 2014 <laughs> Hall of Fame lineup. Including inductors that we do know. Now, we mentioned Razor Ramon. Who's going to induct him? It's yet to be announced. Do you think DDP does double duty since he's also inducting Jake the Snake Roberts? I'd like to see Kevin Nash induct him. I mean, either Kevin Nash or maybe, I don't know about Hogan. But How about Lucas? How about Diesel? He, oh, yeah, Diesel. Yeah. Give him, make him don the black hair and stuff. Yeah, I know. It goes from black to silver fairly <laughs> often. Pretty quickly, yeah. He's like a walking just for men advertisement. <laughs> Which they do, uh, you, they do. I don't know if they still advertise them that much, but you ever oh, watch? Oh, that's Smack a possibility. You oh. ever watch? Little, little cameo from Mike Samsel ju- jumping in the house here, <laughs> throwing up the Wolfpack signs, or maybe the Click sign. I don't know. It could be a little of both. How about Sting? Sting makes his debut in Duckton Hall. Uh, maybe it's in California next year. That's a possibility. Sting. That's a name I hadn't really thought of, but. Yeah. It is a name that, even though he hasn't competed in WWE, certainly had a Hall of Fame career, without question. He was the face of the WCW franchise for God knows close how to a decade, yeah. really. Especially when Flair was gone for a little bit mm-hmm. on, uh, you know, during his WWF run from 91 to 93. They just kind of gave him the ball and he ran with it. Him and Vader, the, those feuds, and actually we'll talk about Vader coming up in a little bit. But... Uh, yeah, Jake Roberts in the Hall of Fame this year. DDP's inducting him. I don't know. As far as inducting Razor, why not Shawn Michaels? Why not the whole oh, clique? Yeah, they could do that. The whole clique, how about for him? Yeah, that, that, the, there are a number of possibilities, and that's probably why it's yet to be announced. Yeah. Also, the Ultimate Warrior going in and being inducted by Linda McMahon. Yeah. Say what now? <laughs> yeah, Linda McMahon is inducting the Ultimate Warrior. Because she was so well, maybe she was influential in his career behind the scenes. I don't know, and, uh, or maybe, no one else. Wanted I guess to because Hogan him. wouldn't do it. <laughs> Who knows? Or maybe he didn't want Hogan to do it. There's, I guess Rick Rude can't exactly do it. Who knows with the Ultimate Warrior? Too soon. No, it's never too okay. soon. <laughs> also, Lita's in. She's getting inducted by Trish Stratus. Paul Bearer in this year with an inductor yet to be announced. It's either Undertaker or Kane probably. I'd like to see I'd like to see Taker get up on the mic and do it, but it probably won't be. Eh, we'll Unless, see. Unless like Lesnar comes out and F fives him in a Hall of Fame ceremony. Yeah, I think you guys yeah, I, exactly. yeah, at 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 the yeah. uh, I'm saying that's at the ripe old way. age of forty nine, I don't think that Taker's yeah. at the point of taking F fives on a on a Dais stage. Yeah, in, yeah, in your video it's a, it's game a, it, maybe, but not It's not a in real joke, life. everybody. It's a joke. It's a bad joke, but it's a joke no I don't believe life. you. <laughs> Carlos Colon. Yeah. You're, you're shrugging at me when I when I say I, Carlos Colon. I, it, I mean, he, he, he was very no, he's a very notable name in the Puerto Rican wrestling community. Obviously, there is, you know, the, the Cologne family is getting up there with, like, the Guerreros, the Hearts, the Von Erics yeah. as far as, I mean, uh, two, two of them wrestle for WWE now, Primo and Epico. At, well, now uh, Diego and uh, the other Los Matadores. Olé. Yeah. And Carlito, and all three of them are going to be inducting Carlos Colon. That 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 was announced, and that is it. Fernando, Fernando, right. thank you, Fernando and D- Diego, Samsel, Mike Samsel throwing an Olay and probably walking out the building. <laughs> yeah, Samsel there we go. There's the, the closing building, of the everybody. door. He is hardly Shawn Michaels or Elvis. <laughs> Although he might, no, no, oh, I can't. Yeah, don't stop there. it! Don't, no. don't hate on Samsel. I'm, I'm, I'm poking jabs at Samsel. We jab each other all the time. You yeah. should hear some of the stuff he says about me off the air. I would like to actually. Maybe gives me. All right, yeah. Maybe gives me some new material. <laughs> you could certainly use it. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Mr. T. I pity the fool. He Being pities the fool. By Piper. Pipe, Piper. Wow. Type. Ah. Uh, wow. That's a blunder. Yeah, we'll talk blunders coming up a little bit later. <laughs> to be announced. I don't know. You could go Hogan. You could go Piper. There, there are a number of different uh, ways you could go with that. Is but Mr. Wonderful who, still alive? I believe so. So maybe we could... I don't know. Well, I don't know. I mean, Orndorff wasn't exactly... I mean, he was just kind of the there. Yeah, he was in that WrestleMania 1 main event, and he is another Hall of Famer, but he's not 
really directly tied with yeah. Mr. T. So, I mean, your two logical options would be either Hogan or Piper, based on their involvement. But notable Hall of Fame omissions. Now, immediately going to the uh, to the Facebook fan page, and, and this is... This is not even close to a surprise that the first name to be thrown out there would be Randy Savage. At this point, now that Bruno last year as well as Bob Backlund were inducted, Randy uh, Randy Savage and Elizabeth, well, he, well yeah, Robert uh, on the Facebook page throwing in Randy Savage and Elizabeth together as a pairing. And I wouldn't be opposed to that, but I think the biggest hang-up with that is that Randy wanted the entire Poffo family to be inducted. And I don't know. Uh, as much as we go by the, well, if Coco Beware can get in, then Blank can get in. I don't know. Lan- Leaping Lanny Poffo, the genius. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I guess I guess it's the whole family, maybe. But I think I think it's it's kind of one of those coattail riding things. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. And I, I bet you. I, I, don't, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't want it to sound like I'm ripping. Lanny Poffo or ripping the genius. It's yeah. just, I mean, it, it's, it's a hall, hall of fame. fame. There's, and granted, a lot of it is is in Vince's mind, but <clears throat> even still, like trying to hold some semblance of prestige to it. I mean, when your greatest victory is a countout win over Hulk Hogan on a Saturday night main event, you know, or maybe a, a Brutus the Barber Beefcake in, in early 90. What was that? 90 Rumble, I want to say. Something like that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure somebody's going to correct me I on bet that. You, uh, I bet you Dan from Chicago put, yelled Chris Benoit at the, at the computer screen. Just like, yeah, just typing saying. it in furious capital letters. Well, well I don't know. Here, here are some names I threw. Here, here's one that uh, not a lot of people have thought of, and it's probably because it's one of those so obvious that nobody thinks to mention it. How about Vince McMahon? When does he go in to his own Hall of Fame? Yeah, I would have thought he would have been the first person to induct him, like the first person in, ever to do the Hall of Fame. Well, uh, they maybe initially, when he dies, maybe it's like quick, quick history lesson for you. It was initially created back in 1993, just mere days after Andre the Giant passed away, and that year Andre the Giant was the sole inductee <laughs> into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, so, so it was created for Andre. <laughs> there we go. A little kind history of fitting lesson. that they're giving him a battle royal this year as well. It is. But we'll, we'll go through some more suggestions. I've got a few more names to kind of throw around and kick around. And uh, The Hardy Boys is a... I know. I'm a Jeff Hardy advocate. Really? Yeah, really. I just said it. I'm not saying now, but I'm saying like later on, after they're both done their careers. 2020? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Yeah. I don't know. It's a possibility. Anyway, something else I wanted to let you know about coming up a little bit later today actually right after the show in fact george's cards and collectibles our good friends over there former wwe superstar rikishi will be there at the top of the hour he'll be there from one until three o'clock today i'll be heading over there definitely looking forward to that and then next saturday it's part it's part of a triple header over the course of the next three weeks Next Saturday, April 5th, the day before WrestleMania 30, former WCW World Heavyweight Champion Big Van Vader. A, scheduled a rare to appear. Imper- appearance. Yeah, rare appearance. Yeah. So definitely want to check that out. He's scheduled to appear from 11 until 1 p.m. And I'll actually be able to go over there because a little, little programming note uh, that we'll talk about next week. And then uh, the following week, April 12th, WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan will be at George's in the Oxford Valley Mall. Again, that's Saturday, April 12th from noon until 2. For more about the upcoming appearances, including ticket info, you can find out by calling 215-943-2475. Or you can visit them online at georgescollectibles.com. Another good way, head over in person because Rikishi, he'll be there in about 40 minutes. So that certainly... A good thing to check out. Told you we'd be mentioning Vader in a little bit. And that's certainly a good way to do so. All right. We'll take care of our first time out. We'll go over the uh, the Mania lineup on the other side. We've got Ron from Levittown chiming in. We'll, uh, we'll see what's on his mind over the course of things in the week. Definitely want to talk WWE countdown from this past week. Biggest blunders. I, I did not get the chance to see it, but I looked at the list and few things that I wish were on there yeah. and uh, a, a lot of things that I definitely want to expound upon from what was on there, plus a lot of news and notes 
uh, including, oh goodness, the Dish Network. Will they change their mind? We'll talk about that. A WWE talent recently cut and a WWE part-timer turning down a Hall of Fame audience spot. Yeah. Ponder that. We'll get th to that on the other side. You have to be invited to be in the audience of the Hall of Fame if you're a wrestler? Uh, well, it was more, hey, do you want to come out to this? And he was just like, no, nah, I'm good. It wasn't, yeah, it was, it was more of a, an extending of courtesy than it was like an invite-only type thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, certain people they have the 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 gravitas that they can they, you know they can show up wherever. And this person, I guess, is one of those. Is like, hey, do you want to come on over to the Hall of Fame? And this wrestler is like, no, I'm good. We'll get into that a little bit more later. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at wbcb1490.com. And now more Pro Wrestling Weekly with your host Ferran Derry. Just trying to make some funny quips. Usually they aren't that funny. Admission is the first step to recovery. And we've got a lot of recovering to do. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. I think I've soured Lucas the intern. Not at all. Mm -hmm. Your face dictates otherwise. Yeah, but if, if looks could kill, we're Someone gonna be looking for a new host right about now. now. Yeah, we're gonna be looking for a new host of the show. <laughs> Oh goodness! All right, let let's get to the phones while uh, while Lucas simmers a little bit here. Uh, let let's get to Ron, who's been hanging on. Ron, welcome to Pro Wrestling Weekly. First off, thank you for last week. The card it was a wonderful card. Uh, uh, I'm going to actually disagree with something. Uh, you know, the Ultimate Warrior and for uh, Hall of Fame, I think it should be uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan, not Dan. Well. Warrior had the option to choose whoever, and uh, considering uh, there are a few reasons why I don't think that Heenan really should be inducting Warrior. I mean, granted, there was a lot of crossover with the Warrior and Rick Rude feud, but Heenan had nothing but disparaging things to say about the Warrior in the self-destruction of the Ultimate Warrior DVD, first of all, and second of all, Heenan isn't exactly in the greatest of health right now. I mean, ever since the throat cancer surgery from a little over a decade ago, his throat and mouth have been sliced, diced, and turned into julienne fries, for lack of a better term. And at this point, I mean, to be able to get up and speak in front of people, I think it might... I mean, it, it, when, he had enough trouble speaking at his own induction, and that was 10 years ago. <clears throat> And he has had a lot more well, surgery done since. Him. I mean, half of his half of his jaw has been removed. I mean, it, it's I, I don't, and I really don't think that at this point that Bobby Heenan wants that mass audience to see how he is currently. You know, I think I think he wants people to more remember him. You know, as the classic Bobby the Brain that we saw in the in the eight, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Well, in talking to him, you know, you know, he's not like. You know, this is the thing for him. I mean, it would maybe we'll get him out of, this, out, of, out of you know retirement, doing something for a little while. Because I remember the time in Philadelphia Spectrum where he had a Donner's costume, the Weasel costume, and a match that he had to. That he had a, if he lost, he wore. It, he and he said it in, in respect to his contract. He said that's what he did for his contract. But you no, know, it would be a good thing. And then you mentioned something about that man. I was thinking of. For that case, Stone Cold Steve Austin or Hulk Hogan maybe inducting this man. That would be interesting for both, either one of them, too. Yeah, well, there, there are a lot of... Uh, more than likely, if and when Vince eventually goes in, it'll probably be... After his death. Kept, well, it, yeah, I'm thinking it's probably a posthumous induction, and it'll probably be something like Triple H and Stephanie, keep, keeping it in the family... As mu either that or maybe yes, you could go Austin. Considering the Austin McMahon feud fueled the Attitude Era, but at the same time, it could also be because like McMahon inducted Austin. It, yeah, kind of a kind of a receipt. If anything, in a sense. it wouldn't be funny if and that would be good too. Him. See, uh, I I don't know that that would be one of those long long shot dark horses. I mean, who knows when that induction's going to be? I mean, McMahon yeah. could be around for another 20 years, and this, you know, we could be having the same discussion in 2034. Mm. Although McMahon would be almost 90 well, at that point. I, I, mentioned this, I mentioned this previously uh, on your column 
about WrestleMania being this is WrestleMania 30, and I stated that uh, Bruno San Martino should have been inducted this year instead of the last year because, you know, 30 years of WrestleMania, who was it that uh, uh, was it in, his, in his day? Bruno San Martino, he was good in his day. He would have been perfect for WrestleMania 30 uh, to cap that off. I mean, uh, if they did it last year, uh, uh, it made last year's WrestleMania look meaningless. And with all that's going on this year, and you got Brock Lesnar against, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, what's he left? That's who he's wrestling now. <laughs> Brock Lesnar, but Brock I mean, Lesnar and the Undertaker. Been done that should have been done last. Yeah, Undertaker. I mean, who, who, who to end the streak? Maybe Brock Lesnar can end the streak. Who knows? I mean, it's, how many more years is Berlin, does, uh, Undertaker have left in him? Well, I mean, uh, there, uh, here, okay. Cu- couple of, far. uh, Iran, let me let me jump in here. A couple of couple of thoughts, uh, I guess, rebuttals to your theories. First of all, a year ago, Lesnar was was still recovering from the diverticulitis surgery that he had, so he wasn't available to wrestle. So it was not like, oh, here you you know you're still you're still bleeding from your backside. Come on in and wrestle. No, they couldn't exactly do that. It it just it was so that wasn't the right time to do it. So they went with the Undertaker and CM Punk. Now, as far as Bruno San Martino. They went with. They could have gone one of two different directions. They could have gone with a milestone mania like they did 30, although it had been long overdue as far as his induction to begin with. But they wanted to keep the ties to where Bruno San Martino was most affiliated, which was Madison Square Garden. And since WrestleMania 29 was in the New York, New Jersey area, they wanted to keep those New York and Madison Square Garden ties. They had the Hall of Fame induction ceremony in. Madison Square Garden, whereas having it in New Orleans the next year, New Orleans isn't as associated with Bruno San Martino. Plus, as far as the contributions to WrestleMania, I mean, Bruno San Martino, he wasn't around in the WrestleMania era except for, uh, what, he managed his son David San Martino in WrestleMania 1 or 2, something like that. But uh, his involvement as far as in-ring, you know, his, his in-ring career had he was in the twilight of his career at best during the WrestleMania era. <laughs> Go ahead, Lucas. I'd like to uh, jump yeah, well, in here as well. Because uh, you said something about Lesnar ending the streak. Here's the thing. The only person I feel like, and Taker even agreed, the only person who could end that streak would be Cena. And, you know, I can go over this. I'm, I'll, I'll talk about it later after after maybe the next break. I'll explain later. But uh, you go ahead, Ron. I have been hearing that too, Lucas, about uh, that, about uh, you could John Cena. But I mean, there's not there's so many out there you can maybe just throw out that are good that could uh, end it, and uh, it could it could happen any time. And as far as like I say, Bruno San Martino, you would go back to him. Uh, Larry Zbyszko was my choice as uh, I'm mean, inducting Bruno, or maybe Vince McMahon himself. Because of the controversy, I was saying that he was never going to, he never wanted to be in the Hall of Fame to begin with at one time. And it was like, it was a total surprise to me when, they, when his name was picked. I said, no, he, I thought he didn't want to be a Hall of Fame uh, inductee. He said that he, he was against McMahon's product. He, and now that it's, it's uh, you know, going well, around, you know, I mean, uh, well, we talked about it at length last year, and uh, thanks so much for the call. Uh, it took a lot of coercing and conversation from Triple H, who extended the olive branch and said, "Look, we, you know, our act isn't what it was 15 years ago during the Attitude Era. You know, the drugs. We've got a wellness policy now, so that's been kicked out. The scandally clad women, the the profanity, that's all gone. We've got a more family friendly PG image." And Triple H said enough of the right things. And Bruno said, okay, I can be associated with this. You know, I couldn't be associated with it 10, 15 years ago, to a degree, even five years ago. I do got to say, more on the uh, more on the Cena thing. Okay, so listen. Undertaker has a lot of respect for Cena. And a lot of it, uh, I've heard a lot of people also saying, like, oh, no, it could all, they could give it to a young gun like Reigns. But I don't think... Taker would lay down for somebody like Reigns. Like, yeah, he could definitely do it, but he, but Taker wouldn't. Like, he could definitely win against the Undertaker, but Taker wouldn't let him do that because Reigns hasn't been in the business long enough. Cena has done a lot for this business, and he really, like, he again, he's got the Undertaker's respect. And imagine if Taker lays down for him, 
then imagine what the... There's only two ways this could happen. That everybody hates Cena now or everybody loves Cena. And it's like, you know, he, he he's probably the only one that could carry Taker in his last match. I, I, I hate to throw this out there, but I, I, I feel like I'm one of the few who is asking this question. Where is this written, carved in stone edict that the streak has to end? Yeah. I don't, well, I'm not saying that it does have to end. Oh, I know, but I mean, there are a lot of people I'm saying, saying right, who's who, end. you know, it, it's like the streak has to end, who's going to end it? It's like, no, it doesn't. It doesn't have to end, but it could definitely be seen in the last match. It, it, it could be, and a lot of people are, uh, are, 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 uh, are looking toward that. And possibly maybe even seen his last match, but, you know. Hold on, I, I got yeah, all right. Go, go ahead and take care of the phones, Lucas. <laughs> all kinds of good stuff. R- RC, what are your thoughts here? You've well, been even like off, the silence behind the violence over yeah. here. Well, I've been listening to you guys. Uh, first off, Mr. Five Move, John Cena. You know, if he didn't have the whereabouts of, you know, reaching out to the kids and the kids loving him so much for the Make-A-Wish Foundation, would he still be as over as he is right now and before? And would Taker have respect for him? Is it respect in the ring, or is it respect what he does outside of the ring? I think it's both, actually. You do? Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, Cena's probably, from what a lot of people said, the most three most successful people in this in this business, wrestling-wise, have been Hulk Hogan, John Cena, and Steve Austin. That's what a lot of people have said. And love or hate Cena, you got to respect him. And Taker certainly does. And he, yeah, you're right. The streak doesn't have to end, but if it... If it does, it probably would be Cena, and even if it doesn't end, it would be Cena in, in Taker's last match because he can carry he can carry anybody and make it look good. I mean, look what he did with Sandow. I'm not doubting what Sandow can do as a wrestler, but he made Sandow look like a main eventer for those couple of matches that he did with him. Yeah, and then after that, that was pretty much it. Yeah. All right, let's go back to the phones. Let's take a look at the local scene courtesy of Ed from Northeast Philly. Ed, what's going on? Good afternoon, do you know anything about the wrestling disaster tickets yet? Are they going on sale anytime soon? Uh, they are coming up on sale uh, fairly soon. I will get the date for you in just a moment. Uh, feverishly punching that up, but uh, I know the event's coming up June 14th, and they're, uh, they've already announced quite a few matches, and it is looking like a very nice card, to say the least. Can you to say what matches are on, or have you just sort of made a silent promise to Anthony Bruno that you... Well, no, no, no. They, they've announced some of them. Okay, so let's I'll bring those here. up as well. I'm working it on it. Like, it. It looks like it's going to be action past <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll get the whole scoop in just a second, just because I don't have them off the top of my head. Yeah. But uh, the one with the powers of pain is that's cool. Yeah, the powers of pain are going to be in action. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're, I know that that's a blast from the past. Mm-hmm. The warlord and the barbarian. Okay, I'm looking. All right, what 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 else is going on? I'll, I'll get that info for you coming up in a, in a little bit here. Live coming to the Wells Fargo Center. Tickets went on sale today. At- yeah, in June, I think they're coming. Yeah, June twenty second, another June Sunday 22nd. afternooner. It's uh, kind of sandwiched in between the uh, the two pay per views in June. They're, yeah, June is now the month where they're doing two pay per views. It's not October anymore. So what is it going to be now? Uh, so I'm guessing it's like what uh, Battleground and Extreme Rules, or no, not Extreme Rules. Uh, payback? payback, I think. Yeah, I believe Payback is in. Oh, here we go. I've got it all right here. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so well, here, here's the lineup after WrestleMania. You've got Extreme Rules on May 4th. That's going to be up in the Izod Center in uh, North Jersey. And you've got Payback on June 1st. That's in Chicago. June 29th, four weeks after that, is Money in the Bank. So one week before Money in the Bank, WWE will be in Philadelphia. Oh, wait, the, it's, it's coming back to Philly? No, no, no. Money in the Bank is going to be in Boston at the uh, TD Garden. Are there any pay-per-views announced that are coming to Philly yet? Or? No. Because that was, okay, I must say, we were both at Money in the Bank. We didn't know each other at that point, but that was that was fun to be at live. That was probably one of the coolest experiences of my life. Okay, Besides tickets go on, I, 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 I have a little bit more for you. Tickets do go on sale for uh, Wrestling with Disaster, the final cut at the old ECW arena, April 7th. What, April 7th? So the day after yeah. WrestleMania, yeah, that Monday after WrestleMania, tickets go on sale. And UWF EC, or ECPW, I don't know if this is an actual date yet. Uh, April 26th? 
Okay, it's about a month away. Mm. Well, I was talking with um, Moose Morelli a couple of days ago. Yeah, he's he's always got something cooking, that's for sure. Yeah. I don't want to step on anybody's toes. <laughs> yeah, no worries, no worries. He, he, might, he, might be, he might be just in the works. I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for chiming in. I'm up against it. Uh, real quick, I've got uh, some of the matches here announced for the Wrestling With Disaster, the final cut show on uh, June 14th. You've got the BWO against the Monster Factory, a six-man tag with Stevie Richards, the Blue Meanie, and Thomas Rodman uh, against, uh, looks like Mark Cruz... Gosh, I'm better at I'm better at names than I am with Barbarian. faces. I'm just looking at the like uh, the, uh, looking at the pictures. Main event faction, whatever their name is, I can. Um, I was gonna say Danny Cage is so gonna kick my butt for this. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll I'll catch hell for that later. We're gonna uh, I'll. I'll get that for next week. It'll probably be a little bit better when I actually have it all in front of me. The Powers of Pain, as I mentioned earlier, they're going, they're going up against Samu of the Head Shrinkers that'll be and Afa Jr., better known as Manu from WWE. Yeah, that'll be good. That, that should be a lot of fun. Those, those were the most recently announced ones, and there are quite a few others uh, that are on the card. I'll have the full card coming up <clears throat> next week. Yeah, well, uh, Sabu against Two Cold Scorpio. That's, That's part of the co-main event. Yeah, that should be that should be a fun one. And the franchise Shane Douglas against the Pitbull Gary Wolf in a dog collar match. Yeah. Revenge after uh, the franchise broke Gary Wolf's neck back in ECW 16 years ago. So that those are just some of the matches. All of the full lineup as has been announced so far coming up on next week's show. And another note about next week. Special programming change due to the fact that we've got high school baseball next Saturday morning, followed by Phillies baseball. The Phillies on the road in Chicago. Ah, bear. Dad's home at yeah, 220. So that, that leaves very little room to sandwich us in. We've been given a spot post game following the Phillies in the old WCW Saturday night spot, if you will. 605 Eastern Standard Time. That is, hard. that is a hard thing to do, that dusty yeah, impression. My is. goodness. Yes, but 6.05 Eastern to 7 o'clock next Saturday night, leading right into the Hall of Fame induction, which nice. is at 9 okay. o'clock next Saturday night. So a jam-packed way. weekend because I couldn't be preempted for WrestleMania weekend. So special thanks to WBCB Program Director Matt Miro for finding Our a voice. chance to squeeze us in on the weekend of WrestleMania. So... Special thanks to Matt Miro for uh, for getting us in. So next Saturday, I know if you tune in at noon, well, you won't be tuning in at noon because you'll be heading over to George's Cards and Collectibles to see Vader. So take care of that. Go grab some lunch, you know, chill out in the afternoon, run some errands, and then 6.05, turn on WBCB, and you'll have Pro Wrestling Weekly special primetime edition. How about that? Can't go wrong with that. Never. All right, let's uh, let's take care of some business, and then on the other side, we're going international. Hmm. Along with our news and notes and whatever else, we've got the great, the great Harry Barnett from all the way over in England. <sighs> on the other side, my arch nemesis. No, Walt's not on the line. Oh. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on fourteen ninety WBCB and online at wbcb fourteen ninety dot com. Pro Wrestling Weekly presents today in wrestling history, March twenty nine. On this date in 1987, the WWF held its WrestleMania III pay-per-view. In the main event, Hulk Hogan pinned Andre the Giant to retain the WWF World Heavyweight Championship. On this date in 1998, the World Wrestling Federation held its WrestleMania XIV pay-per-view. In the main event, Steve Austin defeated Shawn Michaels with Mike Tyson as the guest enforcer to win the WWF Championship. On this date in 1999, WCW Monday Nitro aired live from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. In the main event, Hollywood Hogan pinned Diamond Dallas Page. This has been Today in Wrestling History, March 29. This is Jim the Anvil Nightheart of the Heart Foundation, and you're listening to Pro Wrestling Weekly with Ferran Derry on 1490 WBCB, baby. Yeah!
Thank you, Jim the Anvil Neidhart, and welcome back to Pro Wrestling uh, Weekly Anvil. here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Real cool guy to talk to. That yeah. was uh, that was when I just uh, took over for Eric, not like a month after George's had signed a mania, and he was one of the people I got to interview. We're a real cool guy, and a lot of uh, a lot of funny stories behind the scenes of that that whole day. Because when is when is Sign of Mania this year? Have they announced? Um, it? Well, right now George's is working on kind of some individual things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I mean, you've seen the last like couple of months. Yeah. He's I mean he's brought in Caitlin, he's brought in Mick Foley, uh, he's got Rikishi there uh, coming up in about 15 minutes, and then next week Vader, the following week Hacksaw Jim Duggan. So I think they're kind of going for quality spread out over uh, over a period of time as opposed yeah. to quantity a bunch of people in one thing. Yeah. So a lot of little things as opposed to one large thing. Do you think there's going to be a sign of mania this year? <laughs> I don't know. I can uh, I, I, I can I can talk with George when I head over there a little bit later, kind of get some feelers out. I mean, I don't want to speak for him cuz yeah. he'd be another one who uh, he'll sick his uh, his heavy dug on me. <laughs> I mean, his hired muscle. What did you? What? That wasn't a weight joke. Okay, just checking. Just checking. Man, getting all kinds of heat here. Now we're gonna get international heat, courtesy of Harry Barnett, the great Harry Barnett. What's going on? Well, the only heat that anyone's really gonna get is Lucas, because I mean, it's just fun to pick on him. You know what, Barnett? I swear <laughs> I agree. to God, we once you better not make. If you come over to the states, you better bring some wrestling gear with you. I will take you on. I swear to God. Hey, he, he took out the American Roughneck. You were there live for that, if I remember. I don't care. I can take on Barnett. Oh, oh, oh come on! Give him a little bit, a, a little bit of credit. He is about an inch taller than the American Roughneck, so. <laughs> Yeah, no, we'll give him that. You're asking for it. You're asking for it there. You're asking for it. Please, a little decorum, please. Decorum. (laughs) What are you, Bad News Barry? Or Mean Gene. All right, but... uh, Harry, save us here. I wanted to uh, call up about. I mean, I was listening earlier on, uh, and I heard you guys talking about... um, Well, it was your caller, in fact, talking about the the streak, about uh, Undertaker's streak and then by Brock. Yes. Come on. The one thing I'll probably ever agree with Lucas is that's not going to happen. And I've got to, again, disagree and say that, you know, Cena may be one of the names, but he's not the only name. If there was two names that would ever have ended the streak, Undertaker's already beat them, and that's in the form of Triple H and Shawn Michaels. And secondly, your Hall of Fame question, I'm going to put it down to one and one only, and that is Vince McMahon. I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with uh, CZW's product, but DJ Hyde uh, inducted himself into their Hall of Fame, and as soon as I saw that, I thought, how has Vince McMahon not done this yet? That is True. The only point. person, yeah, the only something. Vince McMahon would have... Cena. I mean, uh, I will with agree with Barn. I am on... I am on bad flirt mode right now. I will agree with Barnett. You know what? That is a brilliant move on Vince McMahon's part if that would happen. I would I could see that. The only one with the biggest grapefruits to induct Vince McMahon is me. Yeah, I could only I could I could only imagine. Wow. Although I had I shouldn't have brought in Vince's grapefruits into this. Yeah. But that's a whole nother story. Harry Stratum, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that. <laughs> yeah, I finally saw a clip of that and showed it to Lucas. Uh, Vince McMahon going nuts uh, back in the World Bodybuilding Federation days. Just, just yeah, look up Vince McMahon WBF from over 20 years ago now. And it's, uh, yes, he, hearing Vince McMahon mark out to all of these muscle heads is, is really? pure entertainment. Oh, God. Yeah, RC, I will have to show you that after the program. Okay. Although we'll be rushing over to uh, to oh, there we go. Well, we're waiting in line to meet Rikishi. That'll be the uh, that'll be the time to bust that out. Nice. Shouldn't that be Vince McMahon WTF? Oh yeah, I was thinking WTF. That, so. yeah. See, yeah, yeah. Great mind single like Barnett. Great mind single like. Uh, don't put yourself over like that, Luke. <laughs> okay. Nice. One you stepped over the line, line again. I like this guy. I, oh, you like this guy? Yeah, I, I like hate Barnett. him. I, I will destroy him. You'll be watching me. One thing I want to uh, bring up before the, the kid in the uh, studio started interrupting. Um, obviously, this week, Ferran will be joining me. And 
for any on my show for anyone that isn't familiar with that go to iTunes and search either for Ron's name my name for Ron's show's name or what's wrong with wrestling and you'll be able to find the show yeah, I still have to get myself on iTunes. I'm not technologically savvy. I just figured out they did a computer upgrade here at uh, WBCB. I just figured out how to get the video editing software, and over the last couple of weeks I've been frivolously working on catching up, and at some point, probably this weekend because I don't know when I'm going to during the week, but all of the episodes so far for 2014... Uh, I still have to upload onto YouTube just so I can get the archives up there. I know uh, Anthony Bruno has been clamoring, you know, wh where, where can people listen to the interview with uh, Pitbull One Gary Wolf? And I've been, I've been, I've been dragging my feet, not going to lie. Part of it is not being technologically savvy, but part of it is... So busy. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> the hardest working man in, uh, well, maybe not in showbiz, but... <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 working two jobs and probably about 65 to 70 hours a week, it does take a drain. So, yeah, that, that's, I, I, but I'm finally getting around to it, finally figuring things out, and I just have to upload them. So, yeah, some of the classic uh, episodes of the last 10 or so weeks, including, as I said, Pitbull 1, Gary Wolf, the Titus O'Neil interview from last week, the 15-year celebration with Eric Gargiulo. Mm. Yeah, lot, lots of great stuff, and I definitely want to get it out there for those who missed it. Anything else, Harry? No, no, that was it. That was it. I was just all right. Say, so uh, yes, uh, so yeah, I'll actually be uh, having a chat with uh, with Harry. What's wrong with wrestling? We'll be doing that tomorrow, and uh, it'll give me the chance to say some things not safe for radio. <laughs> as I as I joked, I think with you on uh, on our Facebook chat, it's uh, it's all, we'll almost be having a chat akin to the uh, the lads over at OSW Review. You got to get me on that show for on. My Tourette's <laughs> will be unrelenting. When it comes, you know, you know, cursing. Oh, it's, sweet mercy! It's a cursing Tourette's joke. I don't have it, but you know, it's. it's uh, oh mercy! Just, just you can have your show back. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> it is, there's a lot that you haven't had today. You have slain the beast. You're done. I'm done. <laughs> All right, that, Harry. Thanks so much for the call. We, uh, we're we're up against it. Always good to hear from across the pond, the great Harry Barnett. Let's uh, let's go to Frank from Trenton, who's been hanging on. Frank, what's going on? Good afternoon. Great to be on the show with you all. What's on your mind? Appreciate it. Yeah, I've uh, been fan of your show since, um, well, a long time ago, actually, and been watching the WWE since the new generation era. And uh, pretty much, uh, I'm just going to say, great show, and um, going to plan to get the network soon, hopefully, on my PS3. Very nice. Yeah, I'm probably going to be doing my uh, main event, mania pick for now uh, because I'm not going to be able to call in next week because i got other things to do. So That's fine. I'm hopefully picking, of course, for the main event winner to get the new WWE World Heavyweight Championship. It will be um, Daniel Bryan slash Triple H if uh, either one would win that uh, match, that is. Or most definitely Daniel Bryan, hopefully. So there we go. So you're looking for whoever comes out of the Brian Triple H match, and you're hoping that it's Brian. That's yeah. I think that's a safe money pick. Although I haven't exactly looked at the uh, the odds and uh, whatever that Reddit uh, user is who's been yeah just throwing all kinds of monkey wrenches into the works. I try not to pay attention to that stuff because I like to keep things on the level here. I don't like okay. spoilers. I've said that many a time yeah. on the show. So if there's like inside information, I'd a rather not know about it, and if I do. I don't want to deliver or disseminate it because it takes the fun out of it. Yeah. Like, yeah, Royal Rumble time, for example, when they say, oh, this person's in, insert name of town, the Royal Rumble is in for a particular year. You know, I, don't want to throw, I don't want to throw that in there because yeah. I don't want people to be like, oh, it could be Jericho or, oh, it could be this person. No, I'd rather be surprised. Exactly. You know, la la well, last year, for example, when Goldust came out or when, when, when The Godfather came out, just that natural, that natural reaction, that natural surprise. When Nash came, when Kevin Nash. Yeah, Kevin Nash, even to a degree. Although, uh, yeah, he's he's done it a couple of times over the last few years. And the same token, they've only announced twenty six of the thirty names for the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Mm. So I don't I'm know. I'm saying Punk could probably. I'm not saying he's going to win it, but he might come back. Uh, well, I don't know. They're going to do thirty entrances. Uh, I have a hunch that they're. They're going to speed things along. I mean, yeah. do, do people really want to sit through or maybe, every... Well, they could, well, maybe although it is a like four-hour show, so... At the same point, though, it could be like, wait, aren't we missing a guy? And then Punk's music hits and the crowd goes mental, you know. 
Uh, yeah, like there are a lot of positive. We'll, we'll hash all that out next week once we have the finalized card. Uh, Frank, so, thanks for so, uh, so much for chiming in. Greatly appreciate it. And, uh, Thank you very much. Thanks for listening to the show. Always, uh, always a great time. All right, just got enough time here for some news and notes, and then we'll squeeze out the lineup and get our predictions certain to go wrong for next week on the Primetime Show. Oh, yeah. That's right. PWW Primetime Wrestling, I guess, is this the special episode since we'll be on from 6.05 until 7 next week for WrestleMania weekend. All right. A couple of things that I had uh, teased earlier. A WWE part-timer turning down a Hall of Fame audience spot. Part-timer Chris Jericho revealed to FoxSports.com that WWE wanted him to be part of this year's Hall of Fame coverage. And I say coverage in quotes. But his view is he won't return to WWE unless he's all the way in. He goes on to say, when I join up with WWE, I'm not, I know I'm not a guy who just works TVs. If I'm there, I'm there. If I'm not, I'm not. I don't come back and do one-offs. I don't have any interest in that. They asked me this year to cover the Hall of Fame. I said, no, I don't want to go to the Hall of Fame. I don't want to sit there and watch the Hall of Fame and watch WrestleMania. Screw that. If I'm doing it, I'll be there. If I'm not, I'll be at home or wherever I am. Not too bad. And he goes on to detail a few other things, including an interesting Vince McMahon story regarding uh, frustration with uh, creative. He says, one time I came backstage and Vince asked, what were you doing out there? I said, well, I was improv He said, next time you're going to improv, tell me. I had to explain to him that it doesn't work that way. And he looked down over his glasses and said, don't be a smart ass. Oh, Vince. Yeah. Oh, you. <laughs> you know, I have a lot of respect for Jericho. His character was a snarky jerk, but, like, um, I have a lot of respect for what he does. Like, because, you know, he'll do it straight up. You won't pull punches. Most definitely. Also, WWE possibly for sale? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Herbs. Yeah, w- or Vince McMahon featured in a Forbes story that spotlights the WWE Network. Forbes noting that McMahon has never articulated a clear succession plan and notes that there are rumors that he might sell the company. Vince is getting up there. He'll be 69 years old later this year. Yeah, but he, what, what, what do you mean he's going to sell the company? Wouldn't he just want his like daughter or son or son-in-law to take over? Well, he, he talks a little bit about it. There are rumored suitors of either Comcast or Madison Square Garden Company. Uh, McMahon described as being coy about whether the company will be run by another member of his family in the future, but he did say that he would prefer that a McMahon remain involved, whether it's Triple H, Stephanie, or another McMahon. Let the Shane speculation begin. We haven't seen Shane in a while. What's he been up to? Uh, Actually, I've got a a little note about that as well coming up real quick here. Vince saying, I would like to see a degree of that. Uh, I think as times go on, things will evaporate. Eventually, Uncle Sam sees the benefit. You can't do anything without Uncle Sam taking a huge bite of it. Yeah, my paychecks definitely denote that. McMahon also broke down the process of deciding on an over-the-top model for the network. He said that if he went the cable channel route, WWE would have received between 21 and 24 cents per subscriber. That's it. So for each person who signed on to the cable network, they would have gotten under a quarter. Yeah, under a little Washington, yeah. That's it. Similar to third-tier networks like MSNBC and Bravo. And Vince obviously wants to be bigger than MSNBC or Bravo. They they also considered an HBO pay channel option, but McMahon didn't like the deals he had in place. Based on the Forbes article, though, WWE stock has dropped considerably. After peaking nine days ago at $31.39 a share, it's fallen to $27.52 a share, which is a 12% drop. Ooh. Damn. Yeah, that, that's that's a little rough. Ah, thought I had it, but apparently I didn't. It's going to throw a drop in there, but <laughs> it's going to go with the sell Mortimer sell from uh, Trading Places. But ah, didn't have it up. <laughs> ah, even Nick Cataldi, who's in the background. No, I got that one. That was funny. <laughs> Well, yeah, he he chuckled audibly enough that the microphones picked it up. Wait, but which which uh which which drop would it be? More to her sell. Well, it was from the movie Trading Places. Yeah, I know, but which one would it? Because like, <laughs> I'm not gonna waste the time now. I've only got a minute and a half here. I'm, I'm sorry, not gonna waste I'm the sorry. time to. to just, all right, you asked about Shane O'Mac. Well, his uh, You On Demand, the the company that he works for that does video on demand for China, they're actually going to be releasing their uh, their 2013 business uh, results. 
in a press conference this Monday. So he's still got that going on. And uh, in some not-so-good news, he recently filed a legal complaint in New York Supreme Court seeking no less than $50 million in damages stemming from a leak at his penthouse apartment. Really? Yeah, Shane and his wife Marissa, who did some interviews for the WWF, uh, was a brief on-air personality back in the mid-90s, alleged that certain toxic airborne contaminants grew in the penthouse due to a water leak created by the construction firm. Uh, The McMahons purchased the home for $3.9 million in 2001, according to records. How about that? That's crazy. And Dish Network changing its mind. Dish Network subscribers, for fret not, you can get WrestleMania 30 after all. The satellite company is now advertising WrestleMania 30 after we reported last week that they would not be. And I think Verizon is, too. Yeah, the price of the standard pay-per-view, $59.99. The price of six months of WWE Network and the HD feed, $64.99. They were the only major company to pass on airing Elimination Chamber back in February in protest of the WWE Network, and if you have the network and didn't see the Elimination Chamber, it's now up on WWE Network, so you can definitely oh, check good. it out. That's going to do it. Thanks to RC from Completely Damaged. Thank you. Be uh, chatting with you Monday about a lot of the stuff that we uh, didn't get to. Thanks to Lucas, the intern, for being a good sport as always. That's what I'm here for. Wow, there was malice in that tone. Oh, that my was goodness. There was no malice in that tone. Do not pull that on me, Ferran. <laughs> and tune in next week, 6.05 to 7, for a special primetime edition of Pro Wrestling Weekly. Stay tuned. Nick Cataldi is next. He's got country music coming your way here on 1490 WBCB. <laughs> 1490 WBCB, Levittown, Fairless Hills, Trenton.